meeting all the new people, as Nick just said, and also meeting like people from other grades. And because only two people from my other school came, so meeting like the whole of the year for the first time was pretty exciting. Yeah, so you brought one friend with you from another school, yeah. and suddenly you came to year seven, and you're faced with two classes full of year sevens. Um, that's pretty nerve wracking. How do you feel about that now? Do you, would you say that the friend that you came with is still your close friend, or would you say that you've got a, a network of friends? Um, and don't worry, you're not giving them, you're not selling them out. Of <laughs> <laughs> I definitely got a whole network of friends. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's uh, question number two. What's been something that you've found really challenging? Homework. <laughs> What's been challenging about homework? <laughs> <laughs> having over 10 due the next day and having on top of it that two assessments. Yeah, that, that, I wouldn't like that either. <laughs> now, telling question, was that your fault that you had 12 things due the next day or was it our fault? Both. <laughs> Getting my assessments started at the right time. Like I left my first assessment the day before. Yeah, we should have rehearsed these answers. <laughs> 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 uh, so, special question for Stinga. What's different about being in year seven at OAS compared to being in year six at OAS? Something that stood out. Mainly everything stood out because you got new classmates, you got a new, you've got different types of study in class because it's a lot more different since you go to high school. You've got different ways of homework. So everything? Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, Luke, what's one of the big difference that you've found uh, at OX that you've noticed coming from a different school? Um, coming from a larger school to a smaller school was a massive difference. How is that different? Because in my year at my other school, I had four classes, all with 30 odd people, and now I have two classes with 16, 17 people. So I shouldn't ask this question. Good different or bad different? Uh, good different. Excellent. <laughs> That's good. All right. Excellent. Uh, last question. Uh, what advice would you give to these guys as they sit there tonight, as they start getting excited about? Be organised <laughs> because you'll have a lot of homeworks, assessments, and you'll likely stay up until like 10 o'clock in the night. That's for you as well. Uh, well, I was here since kindergarten. So, so 13 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 
think that's the sort of way. I do have a couple of questions, and uh, we're equally as organised on our reversed questions, yeah. aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the ones I did tell you about like 30 seconds ago. Oh, yeah. those ones, yeah. <laughs> um, so, tell me, uh, part of the arts community, there is a, a certain wearing the uniform so well. Uh, whenever I see you around the school, there's always an element of pride uh, of being in year 12 and then Orange Anglican Drama School. Well, where does that pride come from? What, do you, what makes you proud of being an Orange Anglican Drama School student? Um, I think for me, it's the connection that I have with my teachers. Um, myself and Angus are in a very unique situation where we have um, nine in the class, um, which is the smallest cohort that would be at our school. So I feel very lucky for that. Um, with that, I have amazing teachers that I get to have one-on-one -on -one classes with that help me improve myself as a person and also my schooling. So I think that's something separate us from other schools if you're deciding to send your um, child to OAGS is that real close connection we have with our, our teachers and I can really call them my friends to be honest like I think that's something to be really proud of is I can go to my teachers with anything and know that they'll be there for me so that's what makes me proud to be an OAG student. Yeah, thanks Sarah. So what about you? Um, I all the years is one like everyone there's no there's no limit to who you can be friends with there's no limit in between year groups I being in year 12 you'd think oh yeah you used to be friends friends with the other year 12 and that's dirty but I can honestly say that I've got friends from year 8 I haven't got to know you just said yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um year eights all the way through to year twelves and even some of the guys in our primary school, like I would call them my best friends. And yeah, it's not just specifically to the year that you're in, it's yeah, across the board. There's a real community feel like right? Yeah, definitely. You you're in it together. It's not just your cohort. It's yeah, everyone. And it, it, I, I do get the sense when I see you guys on the program that there's a sense of you all look Um, we've heard some of the year seven students. Um, what advice could you offer them? And could you offer these year sixes who are attending tonight um, as they embark on their year seven journey? Would you answer that one? Um, I would say, me personally, I'm a very, um, get very stressed, <laughs> um, like everyone would. So I would say, be confident in who you are as a person, because I know when I was in year seven, I would go find friends. I didn't let friends find me. So I would say be open to the opportunity of meeting new people, having new experiences, because you only get to have year seven once, and that's it. So take challenges, um, make new friends, dive into things that you wouldn't necessarily do before, because year seven, you'll remember it forever, and you want it to be a good one. Um, the big thing for me that I should have been throwing myself in year seven, and well, I'll tell myself now, <laughs> um, but I should have told myself in year seven as well, was that it, your mark doesn't matter as long as you put in your absolute best. So if you put in your absolute best and you get your mark back and you're not happy with it, you know that you did try hard on that. And the best thing that you can do then is to look at your feedback that your teachers have given you or go to them for even more feedback or if you need clarification and work on the areas that you didn't do well in, in that task or whatever it was and think about those things next time when you start doing something. Excellent. I know our Director of Innovation, Teaching and Learning would be very proud of that. It's a bit of a growth mindset there, sir. Really <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Angus. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, it's been great talking to you. Can we give them a...
are a very precious possession and uh, we want absolutely what's best for them and we want to put them into a place where they can be nurtured and they can grow. We've actually been working very hard for many years on making sure that uh, your child's experience and your family's experience is of the highest quality. It's the best it possibly can be. And that's through a personal connection and forming a relationship with the families so that you have a port of call. We share that journey together as we, find, we, we see our way through those final years up to year 11 and 12. The journey of success continues and we are ever changing in trying to meet the needs of each of our students. And it's at an individual level as well. It's making sure that each of our students every day is getting what they need. And we have a team of educators who put a lot of time and energy into making sure um, that they do get what they need. The success story has been uh, not shocking for us because it's something that we've been really working hard at and for. Um, but it's testimony that we're heading in the right direction. The community is responding to our ability to provide each of our students with the high quality education that they need. In fact, we've grown by 50% in our secondary school this year alone. I've actually got five enrolment interviews just on Friday, and many of those are thinking of starting just in term three. Um, so, the enrolment and the growth continues, but growth is good. But if we're not continuing to focus on each of the individual students, the growth will be short-lived. We now can see um, a track record of attracting um, 30 or more students into each year group. In fact, it looks like uh, we'll get around about 52 students into year seven next year, which is really, Really terrific. Class sizes are between 15 and 25, so we're still managing to keep those class numbers low. Uh, many of our students going on into university. Uh, obviously, there are students who the university isn't for them. So, providing them opportunities in uh, trades, in employment opportunities post school is really important to us as well. One of the things that we've been able to do uh, as a school with wonderful students, great facilities, is be able to attract the best quality teachers that we have. Um, the students that we have, you, you can hear their testimony to the fact that they have that connection, they're getting that feedback, um, they have a relationship, a positive professional relationship with each of the teachers in their classroom. And that is the secret to their success. That is the secret to them punching above their weight. Because if they don't have that relationship, if they're in a difficult, conflicted position, the learning, the engagement isn't there. So setting that environment up with a high quality education, educator in a well-equipped classroom is really important. The facilities continue to grow and thrive. Um, Design and technology workshops, laser cutting machines, um, food technology rooms, agricultural areas, uh, we've got now music therapeutic rooms, uh, we've seen a study centre, uh, athletics facilities, etc. etc. Um, we are constantly growing to meet the needs of each of our students. <coughs> Over the last couple of years, we've We've managed to complete the, the music rooms, we've managed to complete the, the athletics facilities, um, we've completed now the undercover area that you've seen, that was just completed in January of this year. Um, we are moving towards <coughs> equipping that space for creative and performing arts productions uh, with sound and audio, uh, backstage curtains, etc. And that's an exciting place to be, but as we move forward, we've also got um, library areas uh, that we're um, starting to plan and uh, put into process and a STEM and science, technology, engineering and mathematics centre with eight classrooms 
um, that will be uh, starting to be um, produced in about two or three years time. Um, I thought I'd put that up. Um, it's actually my five children. Um, now I know what you're thinking. He's not old enough. <laughs> Later. <laughs> the, the reason why I put that up uh, there is because um, each one of those children, or my children, all have different skills, different qualities, different abilities. Some love cadets, some hate cadets. Some love um, the classrooms and the athletics, others love sports. Some need a bit more support, and some need to be extended. There are natural leaders in that group. There are vice captains and captains, and there are leaders who need to be prompted along the way. They are all different. They are all unique, just as your children are different and unique. And the wonderful thing about this school is that it embraces that uniqueness. It gets to know the individual, and it provides them with a place to thrive and grow I believe like no other. And each one of my children, no, no matter their difference, have found a place to belong at Orange Anglican Grammar School. And I hope that this is a place also where your children can belong and thrive. So welcome to this evening. I'll pass on now um, to Mr. Watts. He'll talk to you a little bit about the teaching and learning at the school. Thank you, Lou. I'm going to say what a great privilege it is to be here tonight to share some of the great things that are happening in teaching and learning at OAX. As a school, we're blessed to have a teaching and support staff that are passionate about what they do, passionate about the school and passionate about student learning. We have staff with a wide range of experience, HSC marketing, presenters of professional development, publishers of education articles, rural and metropolitan experience. It's a team that is firmly, firm, firmly committed to ensuring that your child has every opportunity to grow academically. Um, the team who have all various roles in assisting Year 7, including myself, include Ms Kelly Anzaki, who's a leader of learning, Mr Tim Brown, Head of Welfare and Student Wellbeing, uh, Ms Karen Huntley, Secondary Welfare, Ms. Lauren Delacar in sports, Mr. Luke, Sim Mr. Luke Simpkins with LEAP, and also our SAGE team. Now, our SAGE team is a collaborative team that focuses specifically on stage four and ensures that students are actively engaged with their learning and continue to develop their academic skills and knowledge. To put a face on this team, I'd like to ask Ms. Stevenson, Ms. Huntley, and Ms. Renette just to come to the front. Just for another little pre presentation. <laughs> so, Mrs. Huntley, what do you teach? I teach mathematics and I am the secondary school leader of the female welfare. What do you love about teaching yourself? Um, well, I thought about that and um, I think for the large part, despite of however you might feel at home, they actually still want to talk and listen to me. <laughs> um, but I really do think that year seven is a beginning of a new chapter for all of them. And it is a new book that is empty and that only they can write. So to be part of that journey right from the beginning is amazing. To instill the relationships and then build upon that, knowing where we want them to be ultimately is wonderful to watch. Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Watts. What subjects do you teach? I teach English and, and drama. <laughs> what do you enjoy about teaching this summer? Giving them lots of homework. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean. <laughs> I love teaching Year 7 because they're young, they're enthusiastic, they're not cynical yet, um, but it's more about the journey. That I love being on this journey with them, seeing them grow, seeing their interests grow, seeing their passions grow, and harnessing their talents, and, and it's great to be a part of that journey. Thank you. Mr. Annette, what subject do you teach? Music. And what do you love teaching at Year 7? 
I love year seven and year eight, which I have together, which is fantastic. I love sharing my joy and love of music. Music is something that we all have in our lives. Every time we go to the movies, there's music. Every time we listen to the radio, there's music. And I love being able to share my passion for that subject with students who haven't had much experience with music and those who come to us who've been in primary school, either here or elsewhere, who've already had musical experiences. And it's great to be able to um, work with all of those students and help to um, get their, their knowledge and their love and their learning of music uh, to the highest level I possibly can and hopefully encourage them to continue on with it through the rest of their school life. Thank you. Success criteria, learning dispositions, feedback, assessments and data have all been a focus for teaching professional development as we continue to develop our curriculum and learning experiences for students. <laughs> this evidence-based approach builds a transparent partnership between teachers and students with a focus on growth and how I, as a student, can grow academically and understand how I learn best. Next slide, please. In Year 7, students undertake a wide variety of subjects um, that are in line with mandated NESA requirements. English, Science, Mathematics, Technology, Music, Visual Arts, PDHPE, Christian Studies, History and Geography. It's perhaps the variety that provides the greatest excitement for students as they enter secondary school, moving around the campus from room to room, but also to different teachers, specialists in their subject. And as they continue to progress through the secondary school, students start to get more choice in what they study, um, with over 25 HSC elective courses being offered to students this year as an option, um, and the school continues to grow both in numbers and subject choice that is reflective of what our student body wants and where they'd like to go in their studies. Um, I'll now hand over to Mr Brown. Thank you. Well, it's nice to see you, everyone. Uh, my name's Tim uh, and I'm uh, school Head of um, School Welfare and Wellbeing um, and I just want to share with you um, some of the features of our school uh, welfare system. Uh, I think we do welfare well at our school uh, and uh, we've worked hard to put in place a strong welfare uh, system and our size certainly enables us to do that but we work hard to put strategies in place uh, to care for each individual. Uh, in primary school, uh, the um, home teacher, the class teacher, is your first point of contact. And in secondary school, um, the tutor teacher becomes that point of contact. And we have tutor groups that are vertically aligned. And so students from seven to nine, and then 10 to 12 meeting uh, tutor groups. Uh, they are co-ed groups and uh, those uh, groups are based around um, house, houses at school. And I just want to give you a bit of a snapshot about what the week looks like. So if we go to the next slide. On Monday, uh, tutor teachers actually meet up um, with their tutor groups. They'll touch base. Um, they actually get reports each week about what are the issues that have been happening for each individual student amongst uh, their different classes uh, throughout the week for any uh, welfare or relational issues. And so those tutor teachers are able to meet up and talk one-on-one -on -one with those students, or perhaps in a small group about those issues and to support them. And particularly in Year 7, that's a really important time uh, because whilst important information might be passed on about timetables and how to access um, information on Canvas, sometimes that can get lost in the cloud that is so much information of Year 7 and so the tutor teacher becomes that friendly face that can just sit down with them and actually help them refresh their memory, ah oh, that's what I'm meant to do. Uh, on a Tuesday uh, our students participate in peer support. Uh, we're really fortunate uh, to have students put up their hand each year, um, senior students that are not just willing and enthusiastic but very capable uh, leaders. And so they will meet um, with Year 7 on their first day of the school year and then they'll meet with them regularly right throughout first term. 
and they will be um, a, a friendly senior student that's going to talk with them about what it means to be a person of character and developing resilience as they adjust to life in secondary school. And they'll do that through games and activities and it's a great opportunity for the students to bond together and also enjoy some nice times, particularly a pizza lunch at the end of that. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we have our school inter-house competition. And so uh, you've heard said already by um, Angus when he was up here about the fact that he relates to students right across secondary school. And so that's not by chance. We actually put structures in place to make that happen. Our house inter-house competition see students working with students from other years, not just in their tutor groups from seven to nine, but seven to 12, being able to do other uh, activities together. We think that swimming, cross country and athletics have a really important place in a school uh, community, but we want to extend that and add in other events that make up what is our Dangamara Shield competition. And so we see students doing debating, are doing engineering challenges, are doing um, poetry recital, theatre sports, netball, soccer competitions throughout the year, and that's a really uh, helpful part of having students engaged uh, and developing strong relationships with each other. Uh, on Thursday, we have a formal school assembly, and that actually happens in this space. Students come in wearing their blazer, and that's a great time for us to be able to celebrate achievements it's actually student-led, uh, and so our student leaders do a fantastic job in leading that. And we also have um, a time to be able to not just celebrate achievements, but also communicate and talk about important uh, things together as a school community. Uh, on Friday, we have chapel, um, and that's an important part of our school life, but I'll leave that as that's gonna be uh, addressed later. Let me just talk to you uh, about discipline and awards, we want your, your child to be the best that they can be. Uh, but I think you'd agree with me that we don't always get things right. Uh, kids don't always get things right. And um, those mistakes in life are actually a huge opportunity for growth to occur because they provide a learning uh, moment. So we, we have clear structures and strategies in place for managing those disciplinary issues. I'm supported by a fantastic team um, when we follow up those welfare problems. And so uniform issues, breakdowns in relationships, bullying, they are our bread and butter. Um, and they're a great uh, opportunity for us to be able to invest and help our students to be the best that they can be. Because we recognise that actually when you get wellbeing right, you actually get academic performance. And so it's important that this happens. As a school, we invest significantly in this because we realise that and we are invested in your child. And so if you ever get the classroom teacher or the tutor teacher or a member of the welfare team giving you a call, know that we are invested and we want what is best for your child. We want them to be happy, successful and engaged. Let me just talk about our award system. Uh, you might have even seen on um, some of our seniors tonight when they were wearing their blazer. We have an award system that recognises student achievement um, in four different strands, academic, sporting, cultural and service. And uh, our students um, earn points as, towards that system through recognition by their teachers. And it's great to see students, when they are recognised in front of their peers on the stage, to be able to put on that pin and to wear with pride the, the achievements that they've made at school. Uh, let me finish off by just touching on what is a bit of a highlight each year, and that is uh, school camp. Uh, we, in fact, we've just come back from uh, school camp. Uh, year seven and eight head out um, to Sydney on uh, camp and participate in the Urban Challenge. Set students work in teams and the teams have different roles and perform different functions. And in fact, it's the students that are driving what's happening throughout the week. And it's great to see them working with Year 8 who provide leadership and some uh, experience to their groups 
and in working together uh, to conquer some great challenges throughout the week. And so if you're with us next year and you find yourself in Bondi making a meal for the homeless or in Manly doing a lesson at the surfing school or doing a break dance um, in Surrey Hills, uh, then you're probably on school camp. <laughs> and in fact, uh, school camp is fantastic, particularly in the bus trip home if you ask the teachers, because it's normally very quiet as the students are snoozing off a great time away. Thanks very much for listening. I'm gonna hand over to Natalie Doherty, our school counselor. Good evening, my name is Natalie Doherty. I'm the school counselor here at OX. This is my second year here. Um, um, I report to the Australian Counseling Association as well as an external supervisor, as well as um, Code of Ethics here at OAGS as well. So I have a pretty heavy job I'm, and I wear a lot of different hats. I would say my job here is not um, the common myth of being like a shrink or shut the door and let me get in your head. Here at OAGS, I'm more of a um, emotional mental health maintenance woman. I, um, I'm a jack of all trades, you know, I see a problem, I try to get in and do what I can to make your child and your life um, as joyful and happy as possible um, in the journey at OX. Some of the challenges that your sevens face um, are peer pressure is a big one, bullying, and that's something that we take very serious here at OX, getting ahead of that, body and self-esteem, both positive and negative, friendship breakdowns, family conflict, family issues, death in the family, anger, negative core beliefs, which is a huge thing um, for everybody, um, negative and irrational thinking. Um, but as a mother of a 20-year-old and a 16-year-old, you would agree with me that the biggest problem today is the online world. And I am on a daily basis seeing um, students in particular from your, well, kindy, all the way up to your 12, um, dealing with a lot of on-world social media problems. Um, I'm very, very interested and invested in trying to get the best training to support you as parents, because that was a world that we didn't have growing up, and it's just literally been thrown into our lives as parents, and it's really difficult to navigate. So I'm on that journey with you. Um, all of the things I talked about indirectly cause um, depression, anxiety, stress, anger, um, and a lot more. And when that happens, um, it shows itself at school. Your children won't perform academically if emotionally those needs aren't being met first. And that can be tipped off by a student feeling comfortable to come to me out underneath the hanger and saying, um, Mrs. Daria, I'm not feeling well, can I chat with you? But most likely it's the teacher that identifies something's not right. And in which they then refer to um, the pastoral care teacher or um, Karen Huntley and Tim Brown, um, and then the primary have their coordinators down there. They um, do a bit of triage, and then um, for the students who need to see the counselor, they come and see me. Um, where I typically at this point contact you and get a consent to um, counsel your child and do a thorough assessment and try to get more to the root cause instead of putting a band-aid on the depression or anxiety, trying to figure out why. Why is your child struggling with that? Um, and that's typically the referral process. If a student comes to me, which they do on a weekly basis, um, or they'll email me, um, I make sure I flip it back to the welfare team just to say, hey, heads up, and or the, the classroom teacher. Um, I work in that office there, and some of the things that I do in there are individual counseling. I also offer group counseling. Some of the therapies that I use are cognitive behavior therapy, also known as CBT. I'm a strengths and solution focused counselor. So rather than looking at the negatives, I try to build up on the strengths. I do some process therapies such as sand tribe therapy and art therapy. That's very helpful for me. I also have an um, invested interest in um, ASD and ADHD as well as other neurodiverse um, things that um, it's more about meeting that child's need versus labeling them 
of making them feel comfortable in the classroom and um, happy as well as the teacher. I do that by collaborating a lot with you as parents as well as the teachers um, and just meeting their needs. Even, even a piece of gum would regulate someone who has ASD and they're on the, the high end of the spectrum. Um, they just need their needs met. And so that's my job is to, to support them and as well as the teacher. I do conflict management, stress management. I've done a lot of conflict management, um, prevention and proactive with the year 74 school camp, assertiveness training, um, communication training, and a lot of psychoeducation and parent support because um, you need support just as much as your children do. Um, and I also invite parents to come in and do um, like creating boundaries, especially around the online world, and healthy boundaries, and um, lots of other things. Some of the proactive work that we just started this year is I teach a year seven um, social skills class. We haven't yet named it, but it's basically a resilience class to teach um, your year sevens to be resilient. And that can look like all sorts of things. Um, last term, it was a lot about <coughs> creating resilience for camp because you know, the students have a lot of anxiety to go to camp leading up. Um, so I did a lot of conflict management and um, got them prepared for that. Um, this term, we're looking at our school values, which um, touch on truth and honesty and excellence and um, acts of service. And so I'm really focusing on what does truth look like and really teaching them and doing role plays and getting them to self-reflect um, as well. And last week we talked about honor. What does honor mean? What does honor in your parents mean? How does that look like on, on, you know, in the five worlds that they live in today? Um, yeah, and that's basically, we're, that's something we're trialing this year, but I can accurately say that I'm seeing less year seven students this year than I did last year. And I think it's in partnership with some other new things that we're trying, um, but in particular the social skills class. So that's just a quick little snippet of what I do. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, bring me bring these now. Uh, is Bill today, I was unable to be here. He uh, heads up our chaplaincy team by investing in Orange Anglican Grammar School. Um, we present your students with an opportunity to engage in chapel services, as you heard, once a week on Fridays. They go during pastoral care time, 25 minutes. Uh, and every student also gets one Christian studies class once per week, seven to 10. And we always offer an opportunity to then study the board endorsed course of studies of religion one or two unit. We have the capability to teach it. It's not currently running at the moment because it's a demands based um, elective like anything else. Uh, and I, I think the best way to talk about chaplaincy is that if you come to Orange Anglican Grammar School, you, you'll be presented with the timeless gospel in a timely way, meaning the story and life of Jesus and its impact on the world. Uh, the wonderful Christian ethic, love your neighbour as yourself. What does that mean? Why is it important? What does it mean today? And how can we actually view our world through the lens of a Christian worldview that is other person centred rather than selfish? Is something that your your children will engage during those Christian studies lessons and also during chapels as they gather together at chapel. Our secondary students still sing, believe it or not, they have to endure me singing with them. Uh, and we'll always have a Bible reading, we'll, we'll pray together, and then we'll hear a talk that uh, expounds some of whatever's been read from the scriptures. Uh, it's a great part of the week, actually, and usually if it's impacted um, by something and we can't do chapel, the first person that tends to be the one that complains are the students that say, oh, we had chapel this week, sir. And it's a great part of our week, and we get to close the week out together. Uh, I'd like to hand over now to Miss Dell, who will speak about sport. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren Delica, but as Mr Hazelton just said, all the students know me as Miss Dell. Um, they don't recognise me tonight because I'm wearing my tracksuit pants and joggers. Um, I'm just here to talk about sport and how much um, it is valued in our school community. Um, it's grown so much since I first started here back in 2012. Uh, we have new facilities, we have so many more new programs on offer. Um, our students are constantly exposed to new opportunities within sport. Uh, firstly, our secondary students, um, very similar to the primary school, we have timetable sport every Wednesday afternoon, um, and it alternates between on campus and off campus um, each term, and we provide them with lots of different 
varieties of activities um, and it's all helped with our sport, sporting schools funding to get different uh, coaches and accredited instructors in to teach our students different sports. Um, we also have many competitions throughout the year which students are allowed to um, nominate to participate in, particularly competitions such as our MOAGS competition, which is against our Macquarie Anglican Grammar Friendship Friends School. Um, the students really enjoy training, getting into a team, um, and beating MAGS. Um, they love nothing more. Uh, we also have some sporting <laughs> pathways, which for the people who are, in, from, are coming from our primary school are already aware of, but they're a little bit uh, different when you get to the high school. So we still have our school representation to then move on to WAS. Um, primary school's high seas, but then we move on to ACES, which is our associated independent co-educational schools. Uh, and then it continues to move on to CIS and um, New South Wales All Schools, All Schools Nationals, I think I've got that right. Um, and we, we provide our students that opportunity to go in as athletics, swimming and cross country, but there's also, also other opportunities in different sports. Um, at the moment, we've got students going away um, for soccer to an ACES competition to touch football. Um, we had a student trial for rugby and was successful in making the ACES rugby side last week. Uh, and for those students who have other interests such as tennis, um, softball, water polo, there's also other opportunities that we can send our students as an individual nomination. So just if your sport isn't advertised, you're always welcome to come and ask and we can provide you with that information to give your, your child the opportunity to participate. Um, and then we also have our um, co-curricular sports, so our winter and summer sports after school. So in winter we have netball, soccer and hockey um, on offer and in summer we have touch football. And even if they are such as like cricket, if your son or daughter is interested in cricket, we have contacts with clubs so that therefore your child could go and um, play with other students from OADS but also um, but in a different club. Um, so therefore they're still, they've still got some of their friends with them and if they're new to the town or new to the school, they're meeting new people. Um, and that's it. Thank you, I'll pass to Mr. Noel Emmett. Um, I'm just going to chat to you a little bit about music and what, what happens here at school. Uh, outside of the music classroom, um, we have a fairly extensive range of activities available for young musicians. Uh, we have a concert band in our secondary school, which is where a lot of the people who play and learn wind, brass and percussion instruments have the opportunity to perform. We also have um, a fairly extensive um, range of smaller ensembles as well. So children who want to play in groups that specialise in their particular instrument can do so. So we have a flute ensemble and a woodwind ensemble. We have a guitar group. And we also have quite a lot of uh, vocal ensembles as well for kids of various different abilities. Um, our senior vocal ensemble, which is mostly high school students, is probably the, um, the pinnacle of that. And those vocal groups are taken by our vocal specialist, who is Priscilla Colgan, who teaches in the primary, but she moves herself into the high school for some of those activities. And I do likewise. I take the concert bands here at school and I work with the primary school students as well as the high school students. And uh, it's great to have that crossover, you know, with that, that ability for children who learn instruments through primary school who can stay in the stream and then continue on and play and move into the secondary school and still be playing with the, the kids that they've learned with uh, previously, which is fantastic. Um, we also have uh, the opportunity for students to take lessons here at school. And as Reverend Stringer pointed out, we have four relatively recently acquired peripatetic teaching rooms, which means that students have facilities to go in and have lessons one-on-one -on -one with specialist teachers. Um, we have specialist tutors in flute, uh, saxophone, clarinet, brass, that's me. Um, we have a percussion teacher, we have three piano teachers. We have a specialist string teacher who comes in and teaches violin and viola. And hopefully we're going to move into some cellos soon as well, which would be fantastic if that happens. And uh, we also have a guitar teacher and we have a singing specialist teacher as well who comes in and works with students who want to extend their vocal uh, 
expertise, I suppose. So they can sing in choirs and they can also have individual lessons to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, their voices and how to use them. So it's, uh, it's a very extensive program and we're growing all the time. We've got students who undertake music exams. We're just preparing for that right now. And we have twice as many students taking exams this year as we had last year. So it's really exciting, it's growing, and uh, our ensemble is getting bigger. And um, I think that as the school grows, uh, those things are all going to become uh, an integral part of the school, which they already are. So thank you. I hope if you've got any questions about music in particular, if your children learn an instrument and you want to know how they can continue on uh, if they come here in Year 7, um, I'd be happy to chat to you after. Thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I realise it's late in the evening. Uh, Cadets. Cadets is a national youth development program which is sponsored by the federal government, obviously aimed at high school students. And Reverend Stream has been working um, with the New South Wales headquarters, and that's the position that I actually occupy in my army reserve job. So we met a few years ago trying to establish a cadet unit here in Orange. So while the cadet unit is based here at the school, it's open to the whole of Orange, we thought we'd probably get uh, about 30. 40 to start off with, and we're blown away by actually about 60, uh, which was the limit. So I've now got to get an increase in the uh, size of the unit to be able to take, take our next lot of people. So again, we were targeting year eights, but we found year seven right through to year 11 wanted to join and become part of the program. It is a fantastic program. I was a cadet myself at school uh, and went off into the army after that, had a great, great life and then became a teacher after uh, decided time to sort of settle down with my family. Brought along two cadets here this evening. Uh, we've got Jack Gordon, who's Year 9, and Susie, who's Year 10. And they're new to the unit, so come over here. <coughs> so, why did you join? Uh, I joined because I figured that, like, cadets would be a great thing because you've got, you can learn so many new skills. Well, at the moment, we're learning, like, last week, last Monday, and we did um, radio communications, first aid, and we're now we're practicing, like, trying to be sneaking around but and it's just a great thing to learn a whole heap of new skills. How about you, Sydney? Um, I joined just because um, I didn't know much about it when I first when it was first introduced to me and so I just decided to try it. Um, I sort of like to do stuff like don't knock it till you try it. Um, I find that I've really enjoyed it by now. Um, it's a lot of stuff I wouldn't normally do. I don't camp a lot. I like to sit in my room and draw. <laughs> but now we're doing camping and it's a lot of fun. And it also looks really good on the resume. So. <laughs> and again, that's, that's right. You push the cadets offers all those things that an employer wants. If you go to any employment ad, they want somebody who can work in a team, either lead or work in a team. They want somebody with communication skills and receive instructions, give instructions. They want some in personal organisation, time management skills. Cadets ticks off all those things, and that's what it is. A national program has been going for over 100 years. We are well resourced. All the uniforms and things come out of the uh, system the military provides, and we have a great time. We're a lot more in store for them. Susie's taking on the challenge this weekend. I'm taking a dozen of them down to Cowra for a leadership uh, day, and I'll come back from that with their first step in the leadership. Uh, series to be able to progress through the ranks within their organisation. Uh, it's not for everyone, but as Susie said, don't knock it till you try it. It's amazing how so many people get into it, really enjoy it, but never thought they would. Uh, my previous school at Barker College down in Sydney did the unit of 300 odd. It's amazing the number that did the cadets when they were sort of encouraged to join and left and then said a year or two later, gee, I'm so sorry I left. Why did you leave? Oh, because all my friends did. I said, well, that's the first lesson in life. It didn't make the right decision. And they all get something out of it. And it's great to see how they grow. To see them come in, especially in the young years, go right through year 12, and the difference is amazing in their confidence. And the abilities of these guys. And it's actually, once we have been going a little while, it is run by cadets. So the senior cadets do programming, and they do all the instruction stuff. We mentor them as adults and make sure it stays on rails and there's no safety issues. Otherwise, it is up to them and develop their leadership skills. We train them and then we give them the experience to be able to actually put that leadership training into practice. 
they would go to the field, they are responsible for the younger kids and looking after them, making sure they get their food, they sleep okay, everything's good, and they're well fed. So it's a huge thing, and we find that the students rise to it and they really enjoy it. Hence, the distributors or the team is trying to convince council that we should have converted hat to heads here. Again, the interest in the outside community after doing the March on Anzac Day, we've been approached by a lot of people. Next slide in term three, so we can finish off and train up some of these guys to look after the new ones that come into the council. But uh, I plan planning on probably a double again in the interest of uh, getting from outside. So it's a great program, and I can only sort of endorse it with my uh, life's benefit. And when the stringers have this and other units that he's been uh, responsible for, just what it actually does for young people and building up the resilience. Confidence. John, I in the camp, they come home, they really appreciate that bed. They really appreciate the porcelain toilet. They really appreciate the shower where you can just turn it and the hot water comes on. And of course, mum's cooking. Whereas those things they take for granted, when you go away and take them away in a cadet environment, they uh, really don't appreciate those little things. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Luke. I run up our LEAP program, which as the acronym stands for, it's all about leveraging <coughs> Now you're probably thinking, well, any school I'm thinking about going to runs programs like that, so how's that different to anywhere else? Well, a lot of schools usually run what, what they call a gifted and talented class, which is usually just a streamed class um, where the curriculum is accelerated for them. And we still do that, a number of subjects, particularly mathematics here. But the great thing about our LEAP program is it's a completely differentiated curriculum that stands outside what students are learning in their usual classes. It involves individualised student learning programs as well. So we can actually, actually tailor it to those students, what they like, but also we can weak point train as well. So for example, last year, one of the things that came out of our sessions was that we were really terrible at communicating with each other. Even though we had all these different gifts and talents, we couldn't come together as a group cohesively. So that's something that we've built in this year. Our secondary students have actually been planning a practice Da Vinci Decathlon for our primary students that'll happen this week in preparation for a, a camp that we're going to do down in Sydney. So the idea of the camp is going against other schools and seeing who we're going to be up against going forwards into the HSC, but it also allows ourselves to enrich in other areas culturally and academically that we normally uh, wouldn't be privy to. So it's, it's generally based on student <coughs> academic performance and an invitation to the program. Um, and it's just gives students that other avenue where they can push themselves in different ways and learn more about themselves. Thanks a lot. Look at that, right? And the buzzer, sir. Well, look, I hope that has given you a great snapshot into Orange Angle and Drum School, the opportunities that are available to the children here. Um, I hope that you feel that it is a place where your students or your children can belong. Um, it has a wonderful feel to it. It's a very community uh, feel. Uh, we've got a, a huge school of a thousand, but our parents don't like that. They don't want that. They want a place where their children are known and they can belong. But we're also a school that has all the opportunities of that big school setting. All the elective choices, all the sporting programs, uh, all the activities that you would see in any other school. So if you have any other questions on any of those things, I've got um, a willing team behind us. Many of them who have presented uh, this evening here to speak with you. Uh, you also have your name tags on so you can introduce yourself to respective other parents who may be sharing the next six, six years uh, with you uh, and sharing that journey. Um, so feel free to uh, stick around, introduce yourself to the teachers, to your fellow parents uh, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, but that concludes our evening. I'll, I'll just finish with uh, prayer and then uh, feel free to uh, leave or hang around and have a chat uh, with friends or teachers.